God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank God for another opportunity to be in your homes this evening. We thank God for all that God has been doing in our lives. I believe that if we look hard enough, in fact, we don't need to look too hard, but from January to now, we have every reason to glorify the name of God. There are some people who entered this year, 2017, with us, and some of them have died on the way, and some are sick, some are have some serious issues in their lives that they're not even sure they're going to survive. We may say well, we have this problem, we have that problem, but we need to thank God for preserving our life because once there's life, there's hope. There's a lot of things that, you know, happen in the world today. And you know that it's just God's mercy and God's love that has kept us. It's not because we are, we are able or we know how to escape. Yesterday, I was, I think it was yesterday, I was watching um, what happened in America, that's Las Vegas. It's, and those people, they've just lost their lives and that's it. And their families that are crying, their husbands, their wives, their children, you know, their parents who are weeping, their friends who are weeping, because those people are gone. They are gone, 58 plus, and you don't even know if, if more will follow suit. And it does happen suddenly. But we thank God for God, so that's why we need to thank God every day. Every day we wake up, every day we go out and we come in. It's an opportunity to thank God because God is the one that's preserved our lives and God will continue to preserve our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. As, especially as we've entered towards the end of the year. Towards the end of the year is always a time when um, Satan and his cause and his agents are always looking for one way or the other because this is the most dangerous time in the calendar of the, of the kingdom of darkness. But we thank God for the blood of Jesus. We thank God for the power of God. None of the plots or plans of the enemy will ever see any of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We all will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ will continuously be our protection and will continue to speak for us anywhere we go. And God will always direct our paths. We will never be in the wrong place at the wrong time in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's just a pity what happened and once somebody is dead, that is it. It's the people who are alive who are left to pick up the pieces of their life. But like I said, we thank God for today and we bless the name of the Lord for today. And um, I just want to, before we go into praise and worship, I just want to, um, we thank God today was our Wednesday Miracle Healing Service and we dealt with invocation and we equally speak about that today because like I said, today this we are entering into the time of the powers of darkness, the activities increase more and more and invocation is one of them. But anyone that will try to invoke our spirits, the blood of Jesus shall answer on our behalf in the name of Jesus. And that is what we dealt with today in the Miracle and Healing and Deliverance Service. And on Friday is our impartation night and is a night vigil, of course, 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. Make sure that you are there. Anytime there's an opportunity to pray together, corporate anointing is corporate anointing. Anytime there's an opportunity to pray together, it's always good to come, especially when it's an all-night program. The enemy works at night, but and when we come to prayer at night, we take the enemy by surprise. And we thank God because our night vigils have been wonderful, they have been powerful, and God has shown forth. So make sure you're there on Friday for that um, program, the impartation night. And of course, our Sunday services remain the same. We have two services. Sunday morning is by 9 o'clock to 11.30. Afternoon service is 12 noon to 2 o'clock. And so if you can't make the morning, at least you can make the afternoon. Or you can be there for the two services as well. And God will bless you. After all, it's Sunday and that's the day of the Lord. And if we spend most of our time in church, is is a time of refreshing. It's a time that God, you know, we receive strength from God for the week ahead. Praise the Lord. So um, that is about that. And um, I will hand over to the choir to lead us in a time of praise and worship. And I pray that the Spirit of God will bless you as you join in. In Jesus' name, amen. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit of the Lord, I have no power. Power of my own, I have no. I 
In the mighty name of Jesus, our God can never lie to us. The Bible said, let every man be a liar, but God be true. His word is true. His word can never fail. He said, heaven and earth can pass away, but no one drop of God's word will ever pass away. The world can say what they want to say. The facts might be there, but God's word is true and to stand forever. In the name of Jesus, and anything we see in the word of God, that is truth. That is yea and amen. And we need to hold on to the word of God because it will never ever lie to us. Praise the Lord. So before we go forth into what we have today, I would just invite my sister as usual to speak a word into the lives of those of you who are watching. And as she speaks that word, I pray that you receive it and it will show forth in your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, viewers. We welcome you once again to Jesus Sanctuary Ministries Hour. We thank God for what God is using this ministry to do in the lives of people. And today, we just have to bless the name of the Lord. What I have to say is that in all things, we must give thanks to God. No matter the situation you're going through, we complain a lot, we murmur so much. We just have to bless the name of the Lord. If you have shelter over your head, thank God for that shelter because there are people out there who are homeless. If you can afford three square meals, thank God for that. Whatever situation, even when you're sick, Thank God for that situation because God will use your heart of thanksgiving to turn your situation around in the name of Jesus. Just tune in and enjoy the rest of the program. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's, that's a wonderful word. You know, it's very easy for us to allow what we hear, what we go through to make us not to thank God. I want to tell you something that when we thank God, even in the midst of issues, you're not thanking God for that problem. But you're just thanking God for who he is. We should always remember that. We praise God for who he is. We worship God for who he is. We thank God for who he is. Of course, we, we do thank God for the things he has done for us. But even when things are going wrong in our lives, we should remember that there are a lot of things that God has done. And we should remember those things and thank him for it. And thank God for being God, for giving us salvation, for giving us Jesus Christ. Because there are people who are homeless. There are people who can't feed. Like I was talking earlier, some of you, of course, must have watched it. The shooting in Las Vegas, some people went out that day and that was it. They did not expect that they would not get back home. Their families or their friends that they left behind did not expect that they would not see them again. It was just a random, crazy killing. And that's it. So we need to really bless the name of the Lord every day. When we have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, it attracts more things into our lives. So we need to, like the songwriter who said, count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. And today, like I said, we're going to go into the topic for today, which has to do with dealing with the spirit of invocation. I, I said this is a time when, if you don't know, this is a season where there's a lot of... Um, more increase of demonic activity just as christians just like maybe other religions have their own we have our own um religious day uh, days that we celebrate other christmas easter and so on and so forth the kingdom of darkness have their days too that they have their celebrations and of course the celebration is not to celebrate for good it's to celebrate for evil and this is the time when a lot of things happen. That's why there's increase of demonic activity, increase of accident, increase of one thing or the other. Even the weather too is even complaining because the weather becomes dark as well. And the period of light is shorter. It's not just a coincidence that this is the time when the, the, the enemy will choose to do more things. And that is why a lot of our preaching are moving in that direction. Pastor has been sp speaking about... Um, powdery substances and a lot of testimonies, a lot of revelation have come forth. A lot of people have had some serious reaction like, wow, that means that this powdery substance was actually an issue. And we thank God for that, um, the revelation of that particular um, powdery substance because it's only God that can reveal, it's only God that can open our eyes to certain things which we will never know. But one of the things I want to, to talk about briefly about invocation before I now go into other things is because today we use the earth and one of the reasons why we use the earth is because in invocation 
when they're invoking, invoking means to, you know, to call up somebody's spirit in order to tie that person's spirit or to call up powers of darkness in order to send them on assignment against people. That's why people come under attack. That those demons were sent on assignment. And how were they sent on assignment? They were invoked. They were invoked. And the thing that the enemy, the enemy uses one thing or the other. Sometimes he uses people's, they use people's names. They use our personal items. They use altars and so on and so forth. Why do we have to use the earth? Because everything came from the earth anyway. The wood for the altar came from the earth. Even, I was even saying that even gold, even if the altar is made, the evil altars are made of gold, Gold is from the earth. Our pictures, our clothing, all of them either came directly from the earth or they came from like um, cotton is grown from the earth, even though it's cotton, but it, the seed has been planted in the earth. So everything has a, a link to the earth, and that's why we use the earth as a point of contact. And I will want you, when you're praying concerning invocation, pick up the earth and use it and pray as a point of contact. Anywhere they are calling up your name, invoking your spirits, in any altar, in any place for evil, the blood of Jesus Christ will answer in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, please, can you just go to the book of... Numbers 23, 23. Our first of all, Numbers 23, 21. Okay. Numbers 23, 21. Yes. <clears throat> he had not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Numbers. 23-1. Oh, 23-1. Yes. Okay, sorry. No problem. Okay. Numbers 23-1. Yes. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And then 23. 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob, and of Israel, what had God wrought? So you find out here in this particular story, because of course invocation, enchantment, and they all go hand, and hand in hand. For somebody to invoke somebody's spirit, of course, they, mu they must use divination, they must use enchantment to know how to go about it, divination to know where the person is, enchantment to begin to do the work of invocation. So they all go hand in hand. And people use altars, of course, whether it's altar of wood, altar of this, altar of that. And they use people's personal items as well. They can use people's pictures, they can use people's names, people's hair, anything. In order to use as a word, point of contact. In order to invoke somebody's spirit. And that's why sometimes in the dream, you may see yourself in a strange place. And you begin to wonder. You may see, you look at people there, you don't know who they are. You've never seen them before. But you know that you are there. But if you're a, if, if you're a strong child of God... Even when you are there, God will either use you to begin to destroy what is there, or the people will not see you. But they, will, they invoked you to be there, to see you, but they will not even see you. And you know that nobody is seeing you, but you are there. There was a time I had a dream, and in that dream, I saw myself in a big gathering, and there were those celebrations, there were those, you know, benches and tables. You know, there's benches and, you know, and yes, benches, tables, and they were all laden with food. But I did not recognize anybody there. And somehow they didn't, they didn't see me. I was just walking through, passing, and everybody was greeting each other. You know, like, oh, greeting each other. Everybody just ignored me. And I now realized that they couldn't even see me. And I now walked and walked and walked until I got to the end of that part. Because I was out in an outside field. And I just sat down on one of them. And I was now saying, what is actually going on? It's when I now looked and I realized that I now saw what was happening. They were placing plates of raw meat on people's, on the table. And I now knew that my spirit has, was invoked in their coven. So you see, you see, they invoke people's spirits. But what they tried to do with me, they, they couldn't do it because they didn't even see me. They didn't even know. But God allowed me to see that. There's a time pastor was telling me about the time he, he, he traveled. I think when we were in Nigeria, he traveled to Aba. And then he had, after praying in the dream, he said that he saw, he said where he was, he was just seeing people. They were just, you know, eating flesh and was wondering what is actually going on. So I'm not saying that they must have invoked your spirit, but instead of them to get you, you were able to see what they were doing. So they invoke people's spirit in order to tie them and to chain them. And you see people not being able to progress in life, no matter the fact that they have the ability and the wherewithal to progress in life. They invoke people's spirit. Somebody can be doing well all of a sudden. The reason why Balaam hired Balak was to cause 
the children of Israel. The, Israel. the children of Israel, they were blessed. God has blessed them. Things were going well for them. I mean, they were not falling sick. Everything was just okay for them. And they were like a problem to the king of Moadites, to Balak. And he needed them to be cursed. People don't, are not happy when you are blessed, whether you like it or not. People get envious. People get jealous. The enemy doesn't want people to be blessed. And he now hired Balak and said, come and curse these people for me. But we thank God they were, he was unable to do so. Balak said, I cannot curse those whom God has blessed. And we thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you find out that that was the reason. And that is what happens in a lot of people's lives. Where somebody can be progressing, all of a sudden, something else happens. And everything that they have, just things begin to go haywire. If they do business, it will fail before it used to move. If they were progressing all of a sudden, they stop progressing. But we will pray that anywhere they have invoked your spirit or the spirit of any member of your family on any satanic altar, anywhere they've invoked that spirit for evil to tie your spirit using your pictures, using your names, using any item of your clothing, the fire of God will consume those altars in the mighty name of Jesus. If they've invoked your spirit upon any altar in order to use you for exchange, because this is the time where they use people for exchange, when people die suddenly, it's really towards the end of the year. Maybe one occultic man, one way or the other, is looking for somebody to exchange life with. They will not exchange our lives or that of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that will try to do that, let them pay with their own heads in the name of Jesus. So that one is for that. My sister, please, can you go to Isaiah 28, 15? Isaiah 28, 15. Okay. Isaiah 28, 15. Yes. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell, and we at agreement, but when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So you see that some people make a, they, they have made a covenant with death. The spirit of death is, one of, is, the, is the most powerful and the most wicked of spirits in the kingdom of darkness because the spirit of death came into being when man sinned in the garden of eden before there was nothing like that but once man sinned in the garden of eden eden death came and death is something that will that cross cuts across borders no matter how rich somebody is no matter how handsome or beautiful or intelligent or whatever death is something that is common to every man because every man every person on this earth will one day answer that call our, our, our own belief and our own prayers that will not answer it before our time. But the bottom line is that everybody will answer that call. Unless, of course, if Jesus' rapture takes place, by God, uh, those who did not die will now meet him in the air. But apart from that, so you find out that death, the spirit of death is, a, is, a, is the most wicked of all the spirits because when death comes, that is the final. And the Bible says that some people have made a covenant with death. They have entered into covenant and they enter into that covenant with death to protect themselves from death. And of course, to protect themselves from death, they have to keep on feeding the spirit of death. And that's why people die before their time. Because somebody somewhere is using them for exchange. No one will use us for exchange in the mighty name of Jesus. So people enter into the covenant, a covenant with death in order to fight people. And that's why sometimes like when you're praying, it's like, is anything really happening? But let me tell you, the power of God is greater than any power and is greater than any satanic covenant. As far as you're a child of God, we will enter into covenant with God. It, that covenant is greater than any covenant because our God is greater than any God and any other power. And if you are not giving your life to Christ today, you will give your life to Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. So the, that's what the Bible says. So people have entered into that covenant with death. They know where they are going. There are people who, no matter what you tell them, they will tell you they know what they, where they are going. When we were in Nigeria, one of the, um, one of the uh, owners of one of the hotels where we, we used to, not we then, we were, then we were not started ministry, we, the ministry where we were in, we used to hire for our Sunday service. So pastor joined the pastor then to go and ask the man to please reduce the price of um, how much he was charging the church for the hall on Sunday. So they, you know, not naturally as pastors now, they bought Bible and all that and came to the man. And the man said, look, don't bother yourself talking to me. He said he knows where he's going to that he has his own seat in hell. That's where his mates are. He said, but you can talk to my son. He still has hope. Can you imagine that? He said, you can talk to my son. He still has hope. So the man knew that 
That was it. Whether you like it or not, whether we want to accept it or not, everybody, whether you are in the, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness, everybody has a point of no return. There's a, there's a place where somebody will get to and they cross the Rubicon. That, that's why some people, no matter what, they cannot leave Jesus Christ. No matter what, they can leave God. Paul said in the book of Romans 8, um, I think 20, 27 down, he was saying that what shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Then shall problems, shall perils, or this or that. So people get to a point where nothing can separate them from God, no matter what situation they go through. Equally, in the kingdom of darkness, people get to a point where they cannot turn back again. They have completely sold out their soul to the devil. And that's what the man was saying. So he must have had well, a covenant with death. And he was using whoever he was using to prolong his life until a time came because no matter how somebody uses other people, you cannot prolong your life forever. One day that person will equally die as well. And one day this man too, he died. And when he died, his children, instead of digging six feet, they dug 12 feet. They said, people said, why are you digging so deep? They said that they know their father so that this man will not come out again. They said, but he's dead. They said that they know what they're saying. They dug 12 feet down, double. And when they buried him, they used concrete, not, you know, covering him with earth. They used concrete, they mixed concrete, and poured this that day directly on top. So that shows you how, what kind of person he was. Why? Because somebody who has a covenant with death does not care again for human life. So anyone that has entered into covenant of death, to use it to invoke your spirit to fight or to fight you or to fight your business or to fight your destiny, let that covenant turn against them in the name of Jesus. Or those who are using that covenant of death in order to, to protect themselves when you pray, it's not going to work because the power of God is greater than any other covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44, 25. Isaiah 44, 25. Isaiah 44, 25. Yes. That frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it diviners mad, that turned wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish. So you see here there are people who use divination, enchantment to invoke powers of darkness, to invoke people's spirit for evil. What one of the what we actually pray was those who are invoking our spirit into any mirror. Because they use mirror, they use mirror, they use crystal ball. I was telling them in church today, there was a cousin of mine, she came to me one day and said, look at the problem she's in, that their neighbor, the one that lives on the flat on top of them, that the girl that lives with her came to tell her, and said, look, oh, see what our, my madam does every night, that she'll bring out a mirror and be calling the names of different people in that their block of flats, that's in Nigeria, and invoking their spirits and saying all sorts of things. So she came to me and said, I told her, look, don't allow that thing to bother you. As far as God is alive, as far as the power of God is greater than that of the enemy, nothing will happen. I now gave her prayer. I said, you pray anywhere that they will call your name in any mirror. Let that mirror shatter. Let it be destroyed. And when I saw the next time, I said, guess what happened? That some days after she began that prayer, she saw the lady in the morning. And, she, and the woman's face, as if to say, you could see, as if something, say something came and cut her whole face. You see wounds all over her face. She was watching. She now greeted her. And the woman didn't answer her. But this is someone that would, you know, answer her, chat with her. You know, when you get the enemy, when you see them in the morning, they, they won't even, if you are greeting them, they will not talk to you. Because they know what happened at night. And that's why sometimes too, when somebody begins to fight you for no reason, you, you may not know where your prayer has landed. So she was wondering, ah, this woman is not talking to her. So the same girl she was living with came and told her ah, that her, the mirror she uses to do her divination and invocation shattered in her face that she was just making incantation and the thing just exploded in her face. So shall it be for any person that will call our names in any mirror. Anywhere they will invoke our spirit in any mirror. They use mirror, they use glass to monitor people. They do to monitor people. I know, I know um, some years back, a long time ago, you know, I think it was 2000, yeah, 2009 or 2008 or 2009. So the pastor told me something one day. He said that he had a revelation and in that revelation he saw somebody and that person was someone that was, that was actually a member of the church, coming into our house, into our, through our the toilet, because there was a mirror in the downstairs toilet, and it was coming in through the mirror. Because a mirror is a gateway. A mirror is, 
is a gateway into people's houses. That's why if you have mirrors, it is good to spray those mirrors with oil and pray over those mirrors because those are openings for the enemy to come in. And he saw him with his, you know, coming in with his back. He was shocked. So he now said, and he had already had a dream again about the man before. So he now said that this man must be into something. And we noticed too, you know, somebody was saying that any time we begin to pray and the prayer becomes hot, the man would just use the idea and start going, you know, to the toilet or take his children to the toilet. So obviously there was something he was into because that is what powers of darkness, agents of darkness use. That's why a mirror, if you have a mirror in your house, it is good to anoint that mirror. I know back home in Nigeria, when there's thunder and lightning, people, they will tell you to cover your mirror. Because that mirror, if the lightning touches it, it won't only shine, it can be reflected back at somebody. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So anyone that is using mirror, anywhere they're using mirror, anywhere they're using crystal ball to monitor you, to monitor your family for evil, those crystal balls, those mirrors, they must shatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there's one I want us to equally see. And um, I said, please, can you go to um, read um, Jeremiah 113? And um, Psalm 119, verse 83. Jeremiah 113 and Psalm 119, verse 83. Okay. Okay. Jeremiah 113. Yes. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seeding pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Yeah, and then Psalm 119. Okay, 1183. Psalm 1983. For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Praise the Lord. So there are some people they invoke their spirits and they cage, like I said, I was saying earlier, there are people that you know that, even yourself, you know that you're not supposed to be where you are. They invoke people's spirits and cage them in one container, in a pot, in a or whatever. Sometimes they invoke people's spirits in order to afflict them, in order to destroy them, or to keep people in bondage. I've shared this before. I remember back home, I will share it again because it has to do with pot. And um, my son was quite young then, and he was always very active, so he, he hardly, he never really felt ill. If he got malaria, it's usually maybe once in a year, once in twice, or twice, or once in two years. And he got malaria, and um, the malaria wasn't going. And he was on treatment for about six days and still, you know, and the doctor was saying that he may need to put him on antibiotics. So one of the nights we finished doing night video and I came into the room and his body was so hot. So I wanted to go and call pastor to say, I don't know what is actually going on, this boy's body. And the spirit of God said, I should pray against pots. And I had never heard that in my life before. But you know, that was not the time to begin to wonder, is it me or, some, or God actually speaking to me? I just began to pray. He said, he told me I should pray anywhere they're calling his name, invoking his spirit into any pots and cooking. I just prayed that prayer. Just three minutes after I began to pray that prayer, he broke out in a sweat. Then he opened his eyes, looked at me, and smiled and went back to sleep. And his body just became normal. So I now went and told Pastor, I said, I see what happened just now. And then I said, oh, yes, that in their place that they actually invoke people's um, spirits into if they want to you know, afflict somebody or to take somebody that they begin to call the person's name and they'll be cooking that pot. And the person will be, you know, hot. The person's body will be like, the temperature will be going up and up and up. You, you'll be treating malaria. Nothing will be, the person will be getting, will not be getting well until the person does die suddenly like that. So I said, oh, really? He said, yes. So you find out that they do that. Some, sometimes they, just, they may just invoke somebody's spirit, not to uh, kill the person, but to tie the person. And you see the person suffering all their life, never progressing, no matter what. I was given an example in the church of a relation of mine, the same thing, the relation I had about the person, and the part I would say because it's quite a long revelation. I saw her, she was in this six spring bed, you know, this, bed, this single bed, and there was this um, wire gauze. In the, maybe those who are from Nigeria, from other places, right, you will understand because that's what they use for make, you know, doing this, like poetry. If you have, poetry, like if you have a small poetry, 
in your back garden where you keep chickens. That's what they use. But this one was just like molded onto the bed. Molded onto the bed. So you, you, no place to even cut. And the hose was so small. And she was like in a coma. She was alive, but she was in a coma. And if you see her alive, she's caged. She's intelligent, she is hardworking, she is. I mean, there's no reason for her not to be a success in life. But they had caged her. And that's how some people are. And they're running her task and not knowing what is wrong. But anyway, they've invoked your spirits. Anyway, they've invoked any of your spirits and caged you people, either in a pot, in a bottle, or in a cage, or in a cave anywhere. Today, the fire of God will shatter that pot, shatter that bottle, shatter that cage, and you must be free in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Oh, we already have a caller on the line. So I think I'll just stop here for now and so I can answer the caller. Hello, Stella from Kent. Mm -hmm. Hello, good evening, ma. Oh, good evening, God, my, bless you, ma. God bless you, my sister. Oh, no, I love you, ma. Amen. It, 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 I mean, the question, the topic of today is one of the funny questions. Uh, one of the things that has been worrying me. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask questions. Uh, no problem, yes, go ahead. I went to Mountain of Fire, Nigeria, for yes. deliverance. Yes. And I was at the deliverance camp. I was in my VG with prayer and everything. Mm. And I had this dream. I saw my sister, our firstborn. She's yes. the first one of the family. Yes. And she was in a meeting with some other people. But I didn't know I didn't know those people. She was the only one I recognized. Yes. And I, I got to the meeting, they were talking about she was talking about the parts of the meat she will be eat. Like, like they are having the meat, they were having the meat and she said, Oh, mm. this is the part she she wants in that uh, the part of that person's body, you know how they are, you know, which is how they my yes. how they, how, how, what is in the thing. So, and I, I was responding from where I was, I was standing at the back. None of them, so they didn't see me. I said, oh, I didn't have money to buy meat for you. All what I was saying, they were not, they didn't even hear, they were not hearing me. But I was looking at them. Yes. I saw them, but they didn't see me. So I was like, what is going on? And this is not the first time I was seeing my sister like that. When I was saying I was a little girl, I saw her. She came in my dream. Yeah. You know, so many things that uh, she's my blonde sister, she's our first born. Yes. So yes. what you just said today now made me understand that maybe it's the power of God that made them made her eat me from them. Yes. So they didn't see me, but I saw them when yeah. she was the only person I recognized in mm -hmm. in, in, that, in that group. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you, what do you think about that kind of person if he, she happens to be your sister or your what, what do you think I can do? The bottom, the, bottom, the bottom line is that in the realm of the spirit, there's no, there's no brother, or sister, or husband, or wife. In the realm of the spirit, either you're a child of God or a child of darkness. So physically, of course, she's your sister. But in the realm of the spirit, she's on the opposite side. So what we do, what I tell you is that you pray your prayers. You pray your prayers and allow God to do whatever he wants to do. If the person changes, okay, the person doesn't change, there's nothing you can do. But you need to pray your prayer because no witch recognizes their own. They only recognize as their own physically. They only recognize their fellow witches. So you do your warfare prayer and let God have his way in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, Ungozi from London. Hello, Ungozi from yes, London. Can you pray for me and my family? Uh, Anywhere they take my name of my children and I, I'm a widow. Anywhere they take any of my children, I call her name and let the Lord to return the center, back to the center. Are you born again, my sister? I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Yes. You are born again. Well, you you, yeah. you pray, you will use the word of God in um, Psalm 37. Yes, yeah. yeah, Psalm 37 verse, um, let, me, let me be sure so I don't give you a wrong. There the Bible says that the sword of the enemy shall pierce their own hearts and their vows shall be broken in pieces. That is, um, um, I'm trying to look where it is. That is, yes, Psalm 37 verse 15. It says their sword shall enter into their own heart and their vows shall be broken. So any one that is calling your names for anyone that is releasing arrow against you and your family. Let those arrows backfire in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17 says that no weapon of the enemy fashioned or formed against us, they will never prosper. Amen. No weapon of the enemy fashioned against you, they will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So you just, you see the, the, the first caller that called in because... A lot of people, a lot of people are going through a lot.
as a result of people. The, as I always say, the world is getting more and more wicked. But we thank God for the power of God, and we thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that protects us. We thank God because it's the power in the blood of Jesus Christ that protects us from the enemy and gives us power. It's the weapon of warfare that we use, and that is why it's good to pray, and it's good, good to use the blood of Jesus Christ in your prayer because the enemy is always looking around. First Peter 5, 8 says that Satan goes around, not only he, he and his cohorts go around like a royal lion seeking whom they will devour, but they will not devour any one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They will not devour any of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, while we're still waiting for call, there was one, actually, I want us, while my sister is going through. Is there any? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have, um, it says, God bless you, Pastor. I'm pregnant. I'm bleeding. Please pray. It stops, and my baby is safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Josephine from Nigeria. Okay, Josephine from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up before you our sister Josephine. Father, Lord God, Jehovah, you said that we will not cast our young. Every attack of the enemy to cause her to miscarriage that child, every attack of the enemy to suck the blood of that child, we cancel and reject it in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray and we decree this day that that child will stay, that child will remain, and she will carry that child to full term in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before you, because I just wanted to say this before you continue, is in Hosea 13, 14, and Psalm 49, 15. Shall I read it? Yes, please okay. read it. Hosea 13, 14, because people use the grave, they use grave eggs to invoke because the grave earth is the power, they use it as a point of contact to the power of the grave to invoke people's spirits into the grave. And you see people die suddenly. Okay. Yes. Hosea 13, 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will ransom them from the power, yes. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid. From mine eyes. Amen. So God said that I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Because grave does have power. And um, Psalm 49, 15. Psalm 49, 15. 15. Okay. Psalm 49, 15 says, But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. Then God shall redeem my soul from the power of the grave. I was I'm sharing something today. I know one of my cousins, another of her cousins from her own, from her father's side was, because in a year, they lost four people. The first person to die was the sister, I think, then the mother, then I don't know the other people who died. After the sister died, I think some four months after the sister died, the mother was sweeping their compound, you know, and she saw grave earth. She knew because, I mean, it was different from the, you know, it was a different color. And she was like, who brought this here? And she just swept it away. And that very month, the woman died. And that cycle of death continued. People use grave earth. That's why when you see earth, when you see that it's strange in your compound, you don't just ignore it. You pray because you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's coming from. And that is how a cycle of death was established in that family. Anyone that is using the grave, anyone has gone to the grave of any of your departed loved ones or any graveyard to pick up the grave earth in order to invoke your power, your spirit into the grave for death, they themselves will answer that call in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You will live and not die. We all will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, that's okay. another. Okay. That, yeah. It says, um, Good morning, sir. It's today. Okay. Prayers on powdery substances is not on the website. Oh. Okay, that's <laughs> Okay, it will soon be on the website, okay. no problem. Okay. Then let's uh, good afternoon, Pastor. Sir. Thank you so much for your prayers. You said to me a few weeks ago to tell my daughter to pray concerning her practical driving test. She did and she passed. Thanks again for everything. God will continue to bless you and your family and your ministry. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
with much love from blessing and family. Okay. Okay. Then there's another one for 27. No, what was the one on top? No, it's top up. Okay, 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 no problem. Okay. Okay, this one says, Good evening, man of God, and God bless you. Mm -hmm. I saw you talking to someone entering inside a main door while you stood outside, out beside the door, telling him about offering. And then you asked me, What am I picking from the ground? I said, I picked my akala, pepper, like as if. Akara. I, akara, yeah. As if I ate Akara, I woke up by the meaning, I don't know. Can you, she picked up Akara from the floor? From the ground. From the ground. That's not good because anything you pick from the ground, you can't you pick from the ground. Um, well, I want to, what, what advice I would give because sometimes when such things happen, you have to check where you eat. Yeah, you check where you eat, you check where you go to, to eat, because uh, somebody eating from the ground, that is spirit of poverty. But I use the name of the blood of Jesus Christ to bind and to paralyze every spirit of poverty assigned against you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not eat from the floor Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hello, Philip from Germany. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Uh, good evening, and God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Please, to pray for me, I had my family. Because there is a lot of premature death in my family. There are lots of, I can't hear you well. Premature death in my family. So, people die young. Premature death. I know, premature death. I'm just, do you, have you had in any, yes, have you had any revelation concerning death yes. before? Oh yes, often I want to use the email and send email to Okay, I will pray for you, but I will want you to send us an email so that we can send you prayer points. Obviously, there's a cycle of death. You, I pray for you. Um, Ecclesiastes three two. The Bible says there's a time for everything. We are going. I'm going to pray every calendar, every clock, every timetable of death that has been established in your fam family, every cycle of death established in your family, by the power and the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, I command it to be cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has used to establish any cycle, any timetable, any clock of death in order to bring untimely death or cycle of death in your family, today by the power and the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, I command that cycle of death to be cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus, I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind and paralyze the spirit of death aside against your family. And I command it back to where it came from in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you and your family members will not taste death early, but you will die at the time that God has ordained for you. You will not die before your time mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, uh, they use timetable that is a cycle of death. Okay, what I was explaining about the person that used um, that the mother was sweeping and saw um, grave earth, they used it to establish an, you know, a cycle of death. And that's why even when one person dies in a family, even if that person died old, like maybe somebody's father died old, as far as somebody died, you need to pray because once somebody dies, they try to use it to come in and establish a cycle of death in that family. And that's why we always advise people when somebody dies, don't even say, oh, maybe the person is old. Even if the person is a hundred and something and you're celebrating life, it is always good to pray so that the enemy will not take advantage and begin to establish, you know, a cycle of death. I know a lot of people who somebody has died in their family and before you know it, people begin to die. Or even if people do not die, things begin to go wrong in the lives of, you know, the people who are remaining. So that is what people do. But when you pray earlier, you pray against it, you find out that they cannot establish it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. One just came in now. Uh, good evening, Pastor. May all, Almighty God bless and protect you and your family. Amen. This afternoon, I just started feeling dizzy and hotness in my hands and legs. Please pray for me and my family. God bless you. Amen. Daisy. I'll pray for you every, 
every attack of the enemy, anywhere that the enemy is projecting any affliction against you in your hands, in your legs, I command that affliction to backfire in the mighty name of Jesus. You use your hands to walk. Your hands will be used for work in the name of Jesus. Anywhere the enemy wants to affect the works of your hand, the, that plot and plan, it will never see the light of day Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every attack of the enemy to on your feet to stop you from moving forward, I cancel that attack in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, King of glory, I pray that you restore your daughter. You restore your daughter, your son, in the mighty name of Jesus. What the enemy has planned, Father, let today mark the end of that hotness in the hands of that hotness in the feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to equally, let me just pray for those of you who are watching, especially in the time that we are in. One of the prayers I want to pray, like I said earlier, Jesus is coming back soon and the signs are all there. When you hear what is going on in the world today, this is the time, in case you have been dragging feet, this is the time to give your life to Christ. Not even, 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 even if things are at peace, because Jesus Christ died for us and we need Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and as our personal Savior so that when we when we go to meet when we our time is up on this earth we know that we'll make heaven heaven is real hell is real there are two places that are destined for people to go after death one is heaven and one is hell hell is not a place for any person to go to and it is not a joke you do not go to heaven because of positive thinking or because you feel that you're good the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It is only God, it is only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we have access into heaven. It is not our goodness. The Bible said that our goodness is like filthy rags before God. So my prayer today is that if you are not giving your life to Christ, even if you go to church, going to church doesn't mean you're a Christian. My prayer is that the Spirit of God will touch you in your homes and that the Spirit of God will convict you and the Spirit of God will touch you to give your life unto Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. None of us were born, born again. We grew up to give our lives to Christ. And I pray that the Spirit of God will touch you and you give your life to Christ. And you see a change in your life from today henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. Another prayer I will pray to. This is the tenth month. And I pray that the fullness of God's blessing will come upon every home and upon every family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everything you have been looking for all these years. My prayer is that in this month, those things will begin to come your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That you will be in your house and God will open your eyes and direct you to where your blessing is in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that as many who have been burdened from one thing or the other, who have been crying all these weeks, all these months, all these years, as a result of one issue or the other, it could be affliction, it could be their marriage, it could be their children, one thing or the other that is happening in their life, rebellion and so on and so forth. It could be financial issues or woes. I, my prayer is that in this 10th month, this month of fullness, God will remember you. Amen. And God will do a great surprise in your lives Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And you will know that we have a God who is alive, a God that no power is greater than, a God who answers prayer, a God with whom nothing is impossible with Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I quickly want to pray as well too that anywhere that the enemy will try to invoke our spirits in any mirror, in any cage, in order to tie our lives, today the fire of God will shatter those mirrors, shatter those cages in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that whoever the Son of God has set free is free indeed. Amen. And we are going to be free indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. amen. Oh, we have another caller. Hello, Jenny from London. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, good evening, my sister. I had a bad dream a few days ago. Yes. I attended one church and I received Holy Communion in that church. Then at night I had a dream where the pastor and his wife came and gave me meat. And I ate that meat. You see? Well, well my prayer for you, well, send us, send us an email. And that is why we pray and, or we advise people and tell people, be careful where you go to. It's always good to pray before you go to any church, because not all churches are preaching the gospel now. A lot of pastors are into occult and one thing or the other. And even when you go to the church, until you establish that that church is of God, you, be careful, you don't take anything. But my prayer is for you that the blood of Jesus Christ will flush away 
everything you have eaten, both physically, because that, that Holy Communion was the physical opening for them to bring you meat in the dream. Everything that you have eaten physically and spiritually, I use the blood of Jesus Christ to flush it out from your system right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let the blood of Jesus Christ begin to purge away every implantation, every pollution in your spirit, soul, and body as a result of what you ate in that church and as a result of what you ate in the dream in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that that thing you ate will not take root in your body from today henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. And any mm -hmm. covenant they wanted to put you into as a result of that thing, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, I command it to be broken mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to be set free from that covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. We only have seconds to go. You heard what she said. That's why we always say, be careful where you go. Be careful what you eat. Don't just take anything because the person said, I'm a man of God. Pray and make sure that person is truly a man of God so you don't put yourself into a problem. My prayer is that God will continue to bless you and keep you and fight your battle. This month is a great month. The blessing of the Lord will overtake you and overflow in your homes this month. And you will testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God bless you and God keep you until we see the next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching the broadcast of Jesus Sanctuary. Address 25 to 27 Ruby Street, off Old Kent Road, behind KFC, London, SE 15, 1LR. Services, Sunday services, morning service 9am to 11.30am, afternoon service 12pm to 2.30pm. Bible study, Tuesday 6.30pm to 8.30pm.